to visit the assessor's office and county assessor Phil Cook to learn more about what they do and programs that are available to the public. Let's head downstairs. So here I am with County Assessor Phil Cook. Phil, thanks for having us here today. Well, thanks for coming by, Constance. We really appreciate it. I'm excited to learn about some of the functions of your office here. Can you explain to me a little bit about what goes on? The Kitsap County Assessor's Office is comprised of 24 people. Mm -hmm. And within that 24 people, we have 11 residential appraisers. We have three commercial appraisers. Uh, a cadastral team of three people and then our administrative team is comprised of seven people including that includes myself as well as our chief deputy. Okay and what is a cadastral team? What does that mean? So our, our cadastral team is our mapping team so their responsibility is to make sure that all the parcels are mapped out uh, accurately and they oversee any boundary line adjustments or or any um, um, mergers of property or separation of property any adjustments to property lines is also also they process the recordings and make sure names are changed in in our system for tax bills Wow, okay, it sounds like quite a job. It is. Explain to me some of the functions of your office. Okay, so uh, the responsibility of our office starts off with really we're, we are required to distribute the property tax burden amongst all the owners throughout the county. Okay. So the county is comprised of 117,000 uh, tax parcels and of that about 6,500 of them are commercial property. And then on top of that we also have uh, um, business personal property. Mm -hmm. So, um, and really, you know, the taxing districts work with our office to make sure that we distribute that, that tax obligation accurately. Uh, now, I, I hear there are some programs like exemptions and things like that that are available to the public. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about those? So the state has laid out a, a variety of different property tax exemptions or deferral programs. So they range from uh, properties that have forest land and designated forest land where they harvest uh, the, the, the trees for commercial uh, harvesting for timber purposes and then we have a remodel exemption we uh, for people who make improvements to their property to people who farm their property uh, and our most popular program is our our senior or disabled persons exemption program for seniors and disabled people that own a home okay and tell me a little bit about mo more about that last program. There are some changes to it this year? So th th that program, like I said, is our most popular. We have about 3,300 uh, homeowners that take advantage of that program currently. And last year, well, prior to 2016, there, there was income limitations for okay. that program, to qualify for that program. And it was $35,000 and below. Mm -hmm. The legislature changed that last year. Uh, and it, it increased to $40,000. So we're expecting an increase in applicants here in 2016 because of those new higher income limits. Okay, and do you feel like that's going to be a large increase? You know, th this happens very so often. 2005 was the last time they raised the income limits and we saw about an 800 uh, household increase. Mm -hmm. So now we're anticipating approximately the same. So we'll probably have over 4,000 households on the program after this year or in coming years as people learn about it and apply. Okay, and that's great. And that's just for the senior and disabled exemptions, correct? It is, or a, or a veteran that's 100% disabled. So there's some okay. basic requirements that you have to be at least 61 years of age if you're for, as a senior. Mm -hmm. um, and your household income has to be, total household income has to be below $40,000. And it's tiered based off what your income level is. The lower your income, the greater the exemption you get. Mm -hmm. Let's head on into the office and see somebody applying just for this exact program. Let's do it. Hi, how can I help you? Hello, I heard there's a program that uh, helps me reduce my property taxes, but I'm not sure which one of these applies to me. Could you help me with that? Absolutely. This is our brochure for our Senior Citizen and Disabled Persons Exemption Program. The qualifications for this are you must be either 61 years of age or older as of December 31st of the prior year or be unable to work due to a disability or 100% service connected disabled. You must also own your own home and live there for more than six months of the year, so it has to be a primary residence, and have an annual combined income of $40,000 or less. So if I qualify, how much are my taxes reduced? Well, this exemption program is set up based on income levels. It's tiered based on the income, so essentially the lower the income, 
the greater the amount of reduction applied. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit confused about what's the difference between the exemption program and the deferral program. Okay. So we have one exemption program and we actually have two deferral programs. This one is our senior citizen and disabled persons deferral program. So that is paired with our exemption program. The same qualifications would apply. So you need to meet the age or disability criteria and the ownership and residency criteria. But the income threshold for this is 45,000 instead of 40,000 for the exemption program. Now the difference with a deferral versus an exemption an exemption program, if you qualify, your property taxes are reduced and you do not have to pay that amount back. With a deferral program, you're essentially deferring payment for a later date. So if you apply for the deferral program, you're asking the Department of Revenue to pay your property taxes for you. If you qualify, they do that. They would then put a lien on the property, which would accrue interest, but this is something that you could pay back in an amount or in a time frame that would work for you. Now, this one is independent of our senior and disabled programs. This is our limited income deferral program. So there is not an age or disability criteria. The qualifications are that you have to own your own home for more than five years and have sufficient equity and have um, an income of $57,000 or less. With this program, what you would do is you would pay your first half taxes and then apply and if you qualify, the Department of Revenue would pay the second half for you. Like this deferral program for our senior and disabled persons, it is a lien that's placed on the property and it does accrue interest, but it's something that you could pay back on a schedule that would work for you. Okay, well I think I might apply for the, uh, the senior exemption program. Okay. Uh, can I get an application to take home? Yeah, absolutely, let me get one for you. And if you had any questions, you're certainly welcome to come into our office, give us a call, or we do have information on our website as well. Okay, and what was that website address again? Our website is www.kitsapgov.com forward slash ASSR. And the phone number? 360-337-7100. Great. Well, thank you very much. You've been awesome. very helpful. All right. Have a good day now. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Here I am with Maxine Skoll. She's the assessment administrator for the assessor's office. Maxine, tell me a little bit about your job. I administer the exemption programs and oversee the levies, the personal property, and um, I supervise the customer service. Earlier, we got to learn a little bit about the Senior Exemption Program and the updates to that. Tell me a little bit about some other programs that are available to the public. We have designated forest land. To qualify for that program, you have to have at least five acres or more that is primary, primarily devoted to the growth and harvest of commercial timber. Okay. You have to have a timber management plan, and then you may qualify for that program. Uh, there's also an open space program that is designed for a property that is in its natural state. You want to keep it that way. You don't want to cut trees or clear brush. Then you might qualify for that program. Um, and then there's also a farm and agriculture. Farmers, they have to, it has to be a commercial farm and they have to prove their income for at least three of the last five years they have to have a farm management plan if they have farm animals on the property mm -hmm. and and then they could qualify for that program as well mm -hmm. there is also a three-year improvement exemption if you do um, a remodel to your home then you may qualify to have the market value of that remodel improvement um, exempted for up to three years oh wow so that's a good program. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to mention is destroyed property. It's not really an exemption, but any time a, a homeowner or, or property owner has destroyed property, whether it is um, torn down, they did it, or they had a fire or a natural disaster, they just need to give us a call and make sure we're aware of that so they're not being taxed for that destroyed property. 
Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It sounds like there are actually a lot of programs to help make um, things more reasonable for the customer. Yes, and all of the programs are listed on our website, or they can just give us a call and we can go over more of the criteria, get them applications, whatever they need to do. Great, thanks so much, Maxine. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Phil, we've really enjoyed this visit today to your office, and I've learned a lot. I didn't realize there were so many exemption programs. Earlier, you mentioned that there is an obligation to distribute that, those tax obligations. How does that work when there are these deferrals and exemptions? Right, well, you, as you heard, we have many deferral programs and exemptions, and you know, there's seven, I believe, total. And there's mm -hmm. actually a couple other little ones that, that are used so rarely that we don't really talk about them but but the interesting part of that is is when you look at a particular segment of homes mm -hmm. and if someone and you have say let's say you have four homes and someone qualifies for exemption and now they're not pay, paying that portion of the property taxes mm -hmm. that means everybody else is picking up the slack that, that doesn't mean that the taxes goes away what it means it gets redistributed amongst all the other property taxpayers that aren't getting the benefit of an exemption and I imagine like other local agencies you guys struggle to get the word out I mean how do you let the community know about these programs and the availability to them we're trying to find the avenues that we can uh, we're, we're, we're taking on uh, revamping of our own website on the, ass the assessor's site mm -hmm. this year we're trying to simplify it so that it's easier to navigate so people can find th the needed information so they can make good decisions and so um, we're adding videos of th that explain these programs so not only is there a write-up about some of these exemptions but there's also a video that walks people through the process and then and then our office is always available to take questions and to help the citizens with any concerns or questions they might have about these programs that's so great. And where can people go to learn more information? So, well, the, you can call us, and that's 360-337-7160. Or, you know, go to our website, kitsapgov.com, and then look under the Departments tab, find the Assessors page, mm -hmm. go on there, and, and there'll be information on the left-hand side where it says Exemptions and Tax Relief. Okay. And there's a lot of other information on there that we're adding recently, like, uh, graphs and tutorials explaining how not just these programs work but also what are the trends in the Kitsap marketplace and what's going on with real estate. Thanks for joining us on this month's episode of the Inside Report. We'll see you next time.